happy belated Valentine's Day Anna here. In this video, I'm gonna show you essential commands that will help you understand your file descriptor better. So let's get started. Okay, so let's run command pgrab dash n python3 to list all the newest processes. All right, so we don't have any python3 processes running right now. So let's just launch the process python3 in the other window and we're gonna launch it in the background. Okay, let's try to run the pgrab command again and here you go, process 3751 is the PID number of the process that we just launched. Now we can terminate this process. Okay, so let's stop Python 3 process running in the background and let's see if we can list the file descriptor numbers associated with this. Okay, do you see the file descriptor 0, 1 and 2 that we always have in our file descriptor table? Now we can try to launch the process and redirect the standard output to the file output.txt. Let's see what happens. Now, if we list the file descriptors associated with this process... Oh, <laughs> wait, we already terminated this process. Uh -huh. Okay, so let's check if we can find another PAD number for our currently running process. Okay, so this new process has PAD number 3754 and we can use it to list the file descriptors associated with this new process ID. And here we go. Do you see that file descriptor 1 now associated with our file, meaning we redirected standard output to the file. Now let's try something else. Let's run Python 3 normally and we can use command psaux to list all running processes. So ps shows the process status, aux will show processes for all users with user-friendly output, x includes the background processes and all the daemons. The grab Python 3 part will just filter out output associated with Python 3. Okay, do you see all these running processes associated with Python 3? Let's check the process with ID number 706. Okay, let's list all the file descriptors associated with this process. <gasps> permission denied. <laughs> Okay, so permission denied is probably because this process is owned by the root. And we can just log in as a root by using sudo su command. Now we can list the file descriptors associated with this process again. And here, do you see? This process is a little bit different. It has more than just the regular file descriptors. It also has numbers 3, 4, 5, and 6 associated with the sockets. So, what does it mean? A little bit off topic, but it means that this file descriptor is associated with network socket rather than file or a pipe. And there is a number inside these brackets. If you really want to know, this number is a socket inode number, which identifies the socket in the system, but not the process ID. And that's a wrap up for my Yay! video. <laughs> Wasn't it nice and sweet? Now you understand how the file descriptor works in your operating system. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Bye! <laughs> and I'm signing off.